Hey YouTube, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. What we're gonna be doing today is a little uh, install of that RevMax valve body. You guys saw it in my last video, did an unboxing, and so today's the day that we're gonna get it done. So I'm gonna take you guys around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a little cruise around here just to show you guys the shift points and a little bit of shift flare that I have now. And then hopefully we'll see a little bit of a difference with the new tunes and the valve body installed. So uh, got my tunes already done. I have not installed them. They're on the SD card on the MM3 tuner. I just have to program the truck to tune it and let's see real quick if we can find that so and the TV T valve B is my actual uh, it's gonna be the newest one so Those are some pulls. Some of the ones where you caught like in the middle were probably around third gear and up, but you can definitely see the third to fourth gear shift flare. It's pretty rough on the truck. You can feel it shake. I'd not say rough on the truck, but it's it's not as smooth as one, two, uh, five, and six. You know what I mean? So the three to four is pretty rough. So we'll see if we can fix that. That's the main problem. I do got new tuning and we'll go from there. So here we go with the install. And before we uh, start the actual you know, removing the hard parts, the throttle, the, excuse me, the valve body itself. I decided just to program the ECM just to get that part over with, just so maybe, hopefully it takes. It'd suck to get the hard parts on there and not be able to program it. You guys see here, we got our uh, trans fluid in. There's, uh, there you go, three five liters, 1.3 gallons. So hopefully that should cover us, but uh, if we don't, we'll head to the dealership since we're doing it today on a Saturday, and we should be able to get it knocked out. One other thing I forgot to mention to you guys in the unboxing video is we got this handy dandy little part right here. I kind of did an unboxing of it already, but since I have you guys here, of course it wants to be difficult. The hell, I'm gonna put y'all down for a second. So I ended up getting this as well, the thermal bypass for the uh, for the trans so that little block right there if you if you look through here it's just straight through there's no there's no um actual thermostat i guess you could say or what do they call that dang thing yeah thermostat so should be simple simple install comes with two fittings and then there's two lines that are on the trans itself and it should be an easy day you guys can see this real well but what we're going to do is Instead of making a mess, I'm going to try to drill a hole in the trans pan since I'm not going to be reusing it. And hopefully it'll drain out that way. Somewhat less of a mess than what we would normally have with dropping the pan. As you guys see, it worked. Didn't make too much of a mess, but she's coming out, and uh, I'm gonna go get another bucket just in case she fills this one up. I don't think she should. 
Now she's just dripping, so now I'm just gonna take all these pan bolts and pull these off. They're just an eight millimeter. <laughs> can see there is the valve body I'll need to remove this hex head here this filter will drop down then I need to remove this filter and then there's I want to say there's 10 millimeter bolts there's one here they're on the outer edges you pull those off and the, the valve body should come down itself um, we're gonna check that we're gonna give it a try and hopefully that's a pretty painless process but as you guys can see that drilling that hole in the, the pan is probably not a bad idea if you're just going to use an aftermarket pan it makes it so much more like less messy that you can just drain it and then uh, not have to worry about spilling it on an accident can see that but one of the most obvious things I forgot to undo was the uh, plug from the uh, pack so we made sure we got that now it should come out pretty easy All right guys, here is the RevMax valve body compared to the OEM valve body. Side by side comparison. As you can see that billet plate there and then the cast plate over there. And one thing you can easily notice is the accumulator plate here. Look how thin that is compared to the accumulator plate right here. And just look how much more coverage it has. And then there's an extra bolt on the uh, RevMax right about here. As you see that right there. I still got to remove the coil pack, uh, not the coil pack, but the uh, shift solenoid pack and put that on the new one and then we should be able to throw it right back in. But first before we do that I want to flip this over and I just want to show you guys the bottom of this cast piece. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see it on the camera but there looks like there appears to be like a lot of hairline, fr cr not I don't know cracks but just like if you look up here it's just there's a couple of them here I guarantee you this jokers leaking like there's it just doesn't look that good so you can see some right here I don't know if those are imperfections in the metal but those are definitely uh, eye-opening once you pull it out like I said my trucks only got 36,000 miles on it so it's gonna be uh, definitely an upgrade to go to the Revmax. All right guys, like I said earlier, we're about to go install this. There's not really a hard way to do it. These lines right here actually just bolt on with a uh, with a wrench. And then these lines right here, you'll see on the truck, you'll peel back some lines and you'll just stick your pick in between there and pull out these clips. And that should release the line that just pops into it. To install it on this new one, you should just be able to pop it in. Or should just be able to go in here and then these clips will loosen and it'll grab the, uh, the flange.
before I lose too much fluid, I'm gonna get this new one in. Here's the old uh, thermal bypass, and as you guys can see in there, there's that spring right there, the thermostat. Once your, uh, your trans fluid gets to a predetermined temperature, that'll open. If that fails, your, your trans is pretty much just going to burn itself up. So that's why they make these uh, bypass little blocks, and they're, freaking, and they're freaking awesome. So this is the old one, new one's in, and like I said, it's just uh, for those clips, you just pull them off with a, with a pick or a scribe. Those come out, those lines come right out, and they just pop right back in. That was pretty simple. And if you guys saw me under the truck there, I was getting covered in uh, trans fluid, just trying to get these lines back in because I didn't want to drain them all out from my trans cooler. So, got that done. That was an easy 15 minute install. All right, guys, I talked about this earlier. This little gasket thing that goes on for your your trans filter. This is the billet extension because of the extra thickness of this valve body because of the bottom uh, billet channel plate or whatever there's I don't know if you can see here but there's a gasket that goes here and there's all they also give you another gasket with the kit to put in the transmission I have been fighting that thing for the past like 30 minutes I didn't film it because I thought it was gonna be quick but I ended up scarring the hell out of this thing to get it out I had to beat it out with a flathead once I got some of the parts of it pried out I hit it with a hammer with the flathead and the other side popped right out so if you guys have new parts or seals and stuff like that to, re to, to replace what's in there, I highly suggest doing it because there's not very many times that you guys open up a trans or whatever the case may be to actually put new seals and gaskets in there. So if they come with the kit, I highly recommend just doing it while it's a part because 30 to 50,000 miles, you just don't know how much, like, like how much longer that seal or gasket will last. All right, here we go. This thing is freaking twice the weight, so. This ain't too bad. I thought this was going to be a lot worse. Just 20 something pounds. I don't want to smack it on my freaking head. I'm not gonna hit them down real tight with this. I'm just gonna get them tightened all the way in. Plug in my solenoid pack so I don't forget that.
she's in there. Everybody, we're back. I had to take a little Chick-fil-A intermission slash lunch break, and I had to go run to Napa to get a few things. So valve body's back in, it's torqued down. It's a 110 inch pounds to torque the uh, torque body, the valve body down. And uh, I'll show you guys what I had to go get from the uh, from Napa. So went and got a long funnel, as you guys can see here, so I could put uh, fluid back in the transmission. Needed to get some RTV, an oil filter wrench slash transmission filter wrench, and a deep socket for the actual uh, putting in the billet um, cap right here, or the billet um, filter thing. Yeah, I'm sure it's got a name. I just can't think of it at the moment. Um, that's pretty much it. I was trying to actually go find a long extension. Uh, kind of like, I'll show you real quick. We have, I have a set of these, but I, what I'm looking for is the ones that actually has like the ball at the top. So you can kind of actually tighten down an Allen head at an angle. And I went to Napa and I went to Tractor Supply. Uh, neither place had it, so I'm just going to... Do it the hard way and do it like everybody else is going to do it. So, should be fairly simple. This has got to be one of the messiest freaking jobs I've done. I hate dealing with fluids. It's a simple job, but man, it's messy. I'll put the new billet insert in there, get that tightened down. Right, guys since you're here just give you a good bird's eye view we have the, the one inch valve body channel plate here the billet channel plate these six screws are what hold it on there's one here one here one here and there's three in the front you're going to supposed to torque those down to 110 inch pounds this is the the bottom pan filter i guess you could say there's a billet insert that goes in here that that's an extension because of this is so thick to print because of this is so thick it puts it it spaces it down. Revmax gives you a spacer, like a, uh, I wanna say like a quarter inch metal spacer for you to put between the, the billet valve body and your filter itself. I think this is just for the pan itself, so it doesn't, I guess, just holds it up and supports it. But at the same time, this screw is just holding it to the valve body. This says patent pending. I'm not 100% sure exactly what that is for, but, that's what we're going to go with. Um, this is installed, your thermal bypass. What I'm about to do now is undo this screw here, kind of move this out of the way so I can put the pan up without having to angle in right here. And that's going to be the end of it. We just need to service it up and then we'll take it for a test drive. All right, now it's time to close it all up with this pretty little pan. Last part, I don't know if you guys can see them, we're trying to get these three back here. There's a bolt here, a bolt, that bolt that goes here, and then one that goes over here. I'm going to see what kind of extension I got to get it. Alright guys, before I package this up to send it back, I just want you guys to look at the bottom of this casting. There is the first one that I seen that was that opened my eyes. There's a few others on here, the crack and everything, but this just shows you how weak these castings are. Look at those bolts. Look at those cracks around there. So just for you guys that haven't done any transmission work or any like valve bodies or anything like that, 
just be aware this is what you have in your truck so when you're trying to you know do a burnout when you're trying to do anything racing related with power added that's the chance you run of just blowing your 68 so just be careful with it i'm glad i did what i i'm glad i did this mod so um yeah there are a lot of cracks in there it's just the cast molding itself so just be careful and as you guys can hear in the background she's purring pretty loud so we're gonna take her on our maiden test drive and see how she goes so we just pulled out of the driveway i'm trying to go through all of the gears in a soft manner i guess if that makes sense i'm just trying to get that fluid to fill those bubbles fill those gaps of uh or air pockets that are in the system um, changed out the valve body and we changed out the uh the thermostat not the thermostat the uh thermal bypass so I'm just trying to get the fluid circulating through the through the uh, valve body and the transmission before I actually drive it so I'm just gonna drive around the neighborhood here the highest I've been in is second gear so probably go on the main street and just take her slow and go from there I manually before I actually pulled out of the driveway I put it in you know reverse and I let it sit there for about a few minutes I went to neutral and then I went to drive and let it sit there for a few minutes and then I manually went through all the gears not sure if that did anything but when we used to flush radiators and or excuse me transmissions back in the day when I worked at like some of the mechanic shops that's what we would do to get all the fluids circulated throughout the system so um, I'm in third gear now I'm probably like an eighth of a mile before I get out of the neighborhood and then we'll see how it goes from there my current tr uh, trans temps 113 uh, I put 2.6 gallons of fluid into it so we're looking at four so eight quarts plus 0.6 so we're looking at probably 10 quarts of fluid I've put in here so far a little bit more or less um, I obviously have the bigger Revmax pan so that's gonna be four to five additional quarts of fluid and I probably got about a gallon of fluid out if I had to guesstimate from the actual pan when I drilled the hole in it so um, I'm driving around, I'm going to get all the fluid going through it, and I'm going to check the level when I get back home, and then uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes, but stay tuned here shortly, we'll be on a test, we'll be on a test drive with it in a matter of seconds for you guys. You guys see up here it says my max trans line pressure was 244 I don't know if that's accurate uh, I really don't trust that because before I even had the tunes or the valve body it was saying I was getting up to like 235 on a high boost or trans pressure so this obviously is a little higher than what I was normally seeing so that's good the normal reading but maybe it's just a spike up to 244 uh, trans temp still at two, uh, 123 and she's shifting a little bit better. I don't know if that just has anything to do with how I'm driving it compared to last time, or I am still kind of being gentle on it because it's literally been like two miles. Man, she feels a lot tighter. I don't know if that's a good expression or way to say it, but it sounds like it's more like solid it doesn't feel like I have that shift flare anymore and or just a, a loose feeling drive line I don't know I mean I don't know you guys tell me what you think of what I'm talking about if that even makes any sense but uh it just feels a lot firmer um, I'm not talking about like a hard shift but she feels like she's just more solid in tune and more stable uh, you guys notice I don't have a check engine light anymore that's freaking awesome I can actually remote start the truck Just serviced her up a little bit she probably needed about two more quarts of uh, fluid to be at the right level so she's there I'm in here the freaking weather is killing me it is hot so uh, that is gonna wrap up today's video guys I hope you guys enjoyed it we uh, got that red mark red max valve body installed pretty painless process it's just a dirty job 
Um, I thought my idea was pretty clever of actually drilling a hole in the drain or in the pan itself, to letting it drain that way instead of taking off all the bolts and then kind of having it slosh out. So might try it if you guys are, uh, you know, if you guys are able to, um, especially if you're going to replace it, you know, there's no reason to keep that. It's just stamped steel. So worked out great for us. She drained pretty easy. And then the next thing was just taking off those bolts. I'm going to go say, I'm going to say this real quick. If I knew my valve body would have looked like that, the casting and like the hairline fractures or cracks or whatever you want to call them. I don't know how bad they are under pressure because I'm not able to see that. So, but that does concern me because I saw all of those cracks around any kind of orifice that was on that valve body and who knows where fluid was going. That's just a freaking crazy coincidence. The truck's not been driven too hard. It's only got 36,000 miles on it and for it to have that bad looking of a valve body, who knows like how much longer that would have lasted. My fluid was a little dark. It looked a little burnt, but nothing too crazy. It was still had a red, good red tint to it. Um, but it's just, I'm glad I did this mod. If I would have known what I know now, I would have done this mod a long time ago to be, to buy myself a little peace of mind, a little bit of insurance for that transmission. Uh, you guys seen, we just took it on the test drive. Everything worked out flawlessly. I don't have any leaks as of yet, or hopefully I don't have any at all, but the thermal bypass went in within about 15 minutes and the valve body probably took us about, if we were start to finish without stopping and just taking our time, we probably could have got it done in a couple hours. Um, I started this probably around 10 o'clock this morning. Now it's about 2.30 but that was a Chick-fil-A break with the wife, you know, lunch, and then run into the park store a few times. So all in all, it's pretty, pretty, su pretty simple, pretty easy install. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. So uh, just like I said, I took it around the block. I'm, I, I couldn't be happier with the way it's shifting now. And uh, yeah, hats off to Redmax Josh over there. He really hooked us up, really took care of us, told us everything we needed to know and obviously got these parts here in a very quick, timely manner. So uh, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. If there's something I didn't cover that you have questions about, please let me know. I wanna answer those questions so you guys can have a quick and easy install when it comes to your time to do this. So um, six bolts to take off. It's probably like 12 or 15 bolts to take off the trans pan, six bolts to take off the valve body. The filter element comes out. The, uh, the spin on filter comes out and just just uh, rinse and repeat. So very simple process. Anybody can do this. So once again, you guys have a great day. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you guys have anything you need to let me know about, please comment down below. And once again, I appreciate you guys watching. Until then, we'll see you guys on the next upload. You guys have a good weekend. So dirty.